Hey guys, welcome to Content is Profit. What's up, Fonzie? How you doing? Pretty good. We just listened from our incredible guest. And this is part two of the newsletter segment here at Content is Profit. I know. This series is going to make a lot of money to a lot of people. Uh, enjoy. I mean, we cover so much today and that's why we're splitting up in, in a few episodes. But one of the things like the three steps to make your business work as a creator, I thought that was impressive. How to monetize early on when you're trying to launch a newsletter or a podcasting platform. Mm. And this first part is especially the starting process, the kickstarting process of the newsletter. So enjoy. Have fun. Just share about what would be the perfect ad for your newsletter guide. You got to put a print in there that just says, size doesn't matter. <laughs> then, We've got hey, I'm Luis. And this is Luis. And welcome to the Content is Profit podcast. In here, you're going to get the insights, accountability, and drive to create consistently and increase revenue. You'll hear from top entrepreneurs, creators, and anything and everything you need to know about content. All this while having a good time. The goal of this podcast is simple to entertain, educate, and turn your content into profit. The goal is to entertain Entertain. Entertain. Yeah, as a, we, we all know, you know, the, fa <laughs> that's the, the faithful listeners, the faithful listeners, they already know that's a tough word for me. So hey, it's, it's all, all good. good. You got to embrace it. Hey, I am so stoked today. Fonzie, what are we talking about? Today we're talking all about newsletters, how to start them, grow them, monetize them. Mm -hmm. We're, we're going to dive deep and I'm not going to say the same joke as I said on last <laughs> episode, but I am extremely pumped up because yeah. I feel since we dove into the entrepreneurial, the online entrepreneurial world, we've been exposed in a way to newsletters. And recently in the last couple of years, we've noticed that they've started to picking up quite intensely. And today we got the guy, the guy that has been literally diving deep into all this and like, analyzing them and creating content around them. So like legit millions of dollars. Yeah. Like uh, eight figure newsletters. Yes. Okay. Yep. Uh, yes. This is time. <laughs> this is Just. time to announce that you need to follow our social media channels and the podcast in your favorite podcasting platform at Biz Rusco and Content is Profit. Go check us out. That is right. And if today's guests help you move yourself a little closer to your goal or grow your newsletter, please don't forget to share this episode and share it with your best friends and leave a five-star review. I said, right. share it with your, I said share this episode and share it with your best friends. You got to share it twice. All, all the best friends. With best friends and with not best All the friends. best friends. <laughs> all right. So today we are back with another guest. Yes, we know it has been a while since we had a guest, but that is because we're only going to bring the best of the best, the creme de la creme. Bro, I appreciate the accent. I wasn't going to tell anything to see if you're going to get it right or bro, not. Bro, I'm a Good pro. Job. You're Good talking job. to a pro. You're talking to a pro here. <laughs> That's right, guys. Today's guest is someone that has dedicated the last years of his life to newsletters. He has been talking to experts across the industry, getting answers about the business models, financial numbers, growth strategies, pricing, and more. Not to mention that he just completed a brilliant piece on how to $10 million newsletters actually work. And he wants to those insights with you mm, can't wait please welcome the one and only newly crowned by the biz bros king of newsletters Ethan Bruce. <laughs> what's going on guys what's up ethan that was amazing man i'm sitting behind the scenes watching this intro asking myself how in the world am i ever going to live up to half of this but thank you oh, but with all the 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 golden ball that you're about to drop on here yeah. you know you said earlier you're like oh your studio is amazing but yeah it's going to be destroyed after all those yeah. boulders like land on here man thank you so much we're so excited uh when we received that message that you want to talk about newsletters yeah. with us we're like yes Let's do it. Absolutely, man. <laughs> I'm I'm stoked to be here. I'm stoked to be here. Ethan, uh, I just regret one thing. I'm regretting one <laughs> thing right now. And it is the fact that we didn't ship you a crown before this episode. <laughs> so right when we say, you know, you're like, what is this crown for? And then when we finish the intro, you just put it on and walk in like, yes, I am the king of newsletters. <laughs> I've got one in oh. the other room. Should I just go grab it? <laughs> uh, if you hey, want to, you know, you know. it's going to make for good content. <laughs> yeah. my, I'll put my Wednesday crown on. For next <laughs> time. Uh, Ethan, uh, super stoked, obviously. So for those that might not be familiar with you, you know, can you share a little bit like the, the two minute version of like who Ethan is, like who you work for, uh, what projects are you involved in? And I think that's going to give us a good starting line on, uh, to tackle this topic. Yeah, sure. So, um, I am a, a writer. My, most of my job is, is, is writing about, uh, businesses and entrepreneurship. I write for 
a newsletter called Trends, which is the paid newsletter. You guys called this out last week, so appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, it's the paid newsletter uh, belongs to a company called The Hustle, which is another huge newsletter business. Um, yeah, we write about business and entrepreneurship. Uh, specifically, my team writes about emerging opportunities where people are spending more money, how you can build certain businesses in like exciting niches that you maybe haven't heard about. Uh, and that's what I spend most of my time doing. And then a couple of years ago, uh, as a company, we sort of noticed that, like you said, newsletters are becoming more and more popular. More people mm -hmm. kind of want to understand how this industry works. It's something that we knew a fair amount about. Uh, Hustle's been around for seven years now. Yeah. Um, and so uh, we decided to, to go out and write the comprehensive guide to the industry. And so ever since then, I've been interviewing not only people on our team, sort of like deconstructing how our company works, but also, you know, just like super early operators everywhere from uh, Morning Brew to like BuzzFeed, AppSumo, wow. all these different newsletters you've heard of, really just trying to break down how the industry works. Mm. So uh, I, I think mm. in a nutshell, that's about it. I'm a newsletter writer uh, deep in this space and have like a minor obsession with how newsletter businesses actually work. It's, it, awesome. it's like your head about to explode with all, like all the knowledge that you have from, from <laughs> like, the years of experience and all these things. Like, is that it's why that. you guys are urged to share all, all the secrets? Yeah. It's, it's, it's that and the weight of the crown. So the, those, the those two the things <laughs> head about to explode. Now it's, you know, what it really is, is it's, um, I mean, it's a blast. So we're about to put out this big publication. Can I tell you the real story behind how this started? So yeah, that, absolutely. It, um, you guys mentioned on your show the other week, HubSpot bought the hustle uh, a little over a year ago. Mm -hmm. um, but before that we were operating as like a completely independent business. And so we had to make all of our money through the newsletter. So we had this one daily email that went out. Uh, we made a bunch of money through that. That was making like several million dollars a year in ad revenue. And then we had the paid product, which was trends, which is another several million dollars a year. And, um, you know, it costs money to run these businesses. Mm -hmm. We had to kind of figure out what the next thing was going to be that we were going to build. And um, when I say that we decided to write the guide to the newsletter industry, we originally launched that as mm -hmm. a paid product. It was going to be like 2,500 bucks. That would be our first really expensive paid product. Um, and so we put like, you know, hundreds of hours into interviewing for this writing, uh, custom illustrations. We built an entire custom web reader around the entire thing. There was going to be a whole wow. social experience behind it. And then literally a week or two before it launches, we get the notice that HubSpot's acquiring us and HubSpot <laughs> is like a multi-billion dollar company. So the, and yeah. like, they were really excited about certain parts of what we had built, but they didn't necessarily need you know, the couple hundred thousand dollars that we had sold of this product. So it kind of got put on a shelf yeah. and now we're, uh, we're going to be giving it away for free. So we've literally wow. written this entire guide that, um, really designed to be like sold as like a really expensive thing. And at this point we were just tired of looking at it on the shelf. So we're like, we need to get this out the door and how can we do that? We're going to do it for free. So the reason that I, I mean, the reason I love doing this is because when you really dig into this space, you see people like, you guys and all kinds of other creators who are using newsletters to like tell their story and build mm -hmm. the, build the business that they want. Yep. That's, yeah. uh, that's what I like being part of. So that's why I do it. Yeah, um, that, that is so cool. And I, you know, I definitely see the value on all that work and I'm 100% certain that a lot of people would pay, but the fact that you guys are giving it away for free, um, I think it's incredible. I, I'm, I'm curious though. Do you think giving it away for, I believe a lot in charging for uh, stuff yep. just because it's that commitment and probably people that are more willing to take action once they get their hands on it. Uh, but at the same time, I see the value of like, okay, it's free and then you reach more people. These people are talking about newsletters, maybe directing traffic to you guys. Is there a sort of play strategy behind that that you guys are, you know, decided on why to give it away for free? Yeah, great question. This is something I wonder about myself. Like, is the do, is the perceived value still there if it's free? And I think, I mean, here's our goal. And I don't want to overhype the guide here. That's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to dig in and actually like yep. give away. I want to give away the best parts of it today on this show. But when the actual guide comes out, the goal is for it to be like so overwhelmingly valuable that it just becomes the thing people talk about when they talk about this industry. Like sort of mm -hmm. the way people talk about like Netflix's, um, you know, employee deck or something like that yeah there's certain pieces of this uh entrepreneurship equation like certain documents or books that have kind of taken on a cult following of their own 
uh, because yeah. they're so useful. And I think our goal is for this to be that, even if it's not for sale, we want people yeah. to like just really dig in and use it. So uh, yeah. we'll see. I mean, it remains to be seen, but Absolutely. people listening to this can be kind of people the, I, at the end of the day, the people are the judge. So yeah, uh, I think it's going to be a, a good play on positioning, you know, definitely position you guys as a go to knowledge broker for newsletters. And then everybody's we'll going to have an, a question. She's going to go to you guys. Yeah. So we'll I, I, I've been going through your Twitter thread, which, by the way, we're going to link it right below. And it's oh, it's so good. And there's so many questions there. But before we go into, like, the nitty-gritty and the meat and the, the, the really juicy stuff, I'm very interested, right? Like, we talk a lot about content teams and uh, fractional teams, right? We provide a type of fractional team for uh, video content. Right. So I'm very interested in those initial days of you guys. Right. Because we might have some listeners that either they're building their own teams internally. Right. They're trying to figure out their content framework. They're trying to monetize that content. Right. Uh, for us is known that our our show is our platform. Right. Whether that's an audience side of things that come to us or whether that's the guests that we connect with and develop that relationship. Right. That's the way that we monetize uh, this type of content. Uh, but I'm very interested initially when you guys started, you know, the newsletters. How was that process of starting it from zero? What was the decision? We're like, okay, are, we need to we need to monetize this. How? How many ways? Like, if you can give us a quick background on that, like, and then we can dive in into into the goal of the guide. Totally. Yeah, great question. So, interestingly enough, the hustle actually started as an event company. Uh, it was founded by Sam Parr, who's you know pretty big force to be reckoned with on Twitter and yes. elsewhere. <laughs> um, and at the time, but at the time, he wasn't really known. He didn't have a, much of an audience at all. He just kind of uh, been in entrepreneurial circles. And so he, you know, was living in San Francisco and he wanted to build up his network and also build a business. And so the idea for the hustle was sort of the, the merger of those two things. Mm. Um, the business side was like selling tickets to this event where he was going to get a whole bunch of entrepreneurs to come and talk about entrepreneurship. And then obviously, as for the person who was organizing that entire thing, it helps to build his network as well. Um, so the hustle actually ran as a uh, uh, an event business for the first one or two years that it was around. There wasn't really a newsletter there. And this, I mean, you know, this, like, like I said, it was six or seven years ago. So this was mm. really before newsletters had come on the scene and been like a popular yeah, business yeah. model. A lot of people weren't doing it. Um, and so they ran this event company. The event company was quite profitable. And then at some point, um, just... I actually don't know exactly why he pivoted, but I think it was probably something to do with diversifying income mm. uh, because, you know, after you host several events, you have all these email addresses yeah. and there's an opportunity there to continue to build the audience, continue to build not only a pipeline for the events, but also to potentially monetize that email offering. And so at some point they started creating <clears throat> just a more and more regular content schedule mm. and the hustle morphed into like a primarily newsletter driven company interesting. Uh, and yeah you see this a lot actually it's interesting companies like morning brew also kind of started with with that goal in mind they didn't necessarily start with the idea of monetizing out of the gate uh, yeah. and it was several years into building that company that they actually you know raised money hired writers instead of using um volunteers and actually decided to make a go of it as a business yeah so yeah a lot of these companies that you hear people talk about these days they started somewhere else and pivoted into newsletters and then interestingly like they figured out how to make the industry work and now more and more people are seeing oh this is a totally viable business yeah and that's why you're seeing kind of rush in mm. interesting i'm you know i'm curious do you see that transition from event based business to the newsletter uh based business you said they already had this database, right? There's a bunch of emails and then the transition. Was that an advantage at the time of starting? Because obviously there's a lot of people that are going to start from scratch, from zero, right? Zero people. And probably the person that starts it is going to be the researcher, is going to be the writer. Or like you said, they might have some um, people that, you know, want to give their time to write on the newsletter, which I'm very curious on learning how you guys go about doing that. I think it's a pretty, pretty good probably starting strategy for those that are looking, you know, to build a newsletter. Mm -hmm. But I'm curious, was that an advantage having that number? And do you, do you remember what was the amount of, you know, potential emails at the beginning that you guys had to kickstart that newsletter? Great question. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say it, 
Yes and no, in terms of whether or not it's an advantage. So when you start a newsletter business, if you already have pre-existing emails, that'll always be some kind of an advantage. Yeah. But the reality is, and we can talk about this more as we get into growth, I think yeah. the reason that the hustle ended up being successful as a newsletter business is actually because Sam uh, and his early team were very were quite good at getting attention. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it, it, it wasn't necessarily about the first emails that they had on the list. It was that they were able to actually continue growing that list at a pretty rapid clip. Uh, and like I said, we can get into this deeper when we start talking more and more about growth. But um, for them early on, the biggest thing that they leaned on was viral content. And so they would, uh, this is what like Sam calls showmanship. They would select articles specifically because they knew they were going to be controversial or that they would have like a high likelihood of traveling around the web. They did a really, really good job of that early on, and that kind of established them in the space. Mm. Um, I think one other thing that was like an early advantage for them, and I didn't join the team until 2020, so uh, somewhere between like three and five years into the into the game yeah. for them. Um, but when I look back at what they did really well early on, it was that ability to like create content that people talk about. Mm. Um, and... I don't know. I'll think about some other things as uh, mm -hmm. as we go through it. But there's a couple other things that they did really well. We can we can chat about as we go. Yeah, absolutely. I remember. Um, I don't know if this this was actually the hustle or the morning brew, but I remember signing up to one of those, and they had at the bottom of every email, kind of like a progress bar on how many people you refer, and then you would qualify for uh, surprises. I remember one time they were like giving away like a MacBooks Pro and stuff. Like that. I was like, heck yeah, this is awesome. I'm gonna send it to all my friends, right? So yep. I'm guessing, again, we can dive right. into those strategies when we get to the growth side of things. Yeah. Uh, my, sorry, Ethan, my, my last question here, right? Like it's it's on the team side and then that decision on monetizing, right? Like how, how did you guys make money initially, right? Because I think that's like the first hurdle that a lot of people trying to figure out is it, okay, you hear all these statements like, uh, you can make one dollar off of each subscriber that you have in your list. For example, that's like uh, one of the standards. Uh, and then people are like, "Oh, sweet. Okay, well, what do I do? Do I sell them things? Do do they go to my website and do that? Do I sell sponsorships? Like, what is it, right?" And and people starting up the the trend that we've seen is especially with podcasting, they tend to go to the sponsorship side and then they go into the audience loop. And initially, that can be very challenging, right? We have to do a bunch of stuff to to get there. So. Uh, what was that? How do you guys start it, the the monetization aspect of the hustle? And then, um, yeah, how's, how has that evolved? That's a perfect question. And, and I'll get into it. We'll go super deep on it in, a, in just a second. But you reminded me of two other things that I think um, uh, just relate to the, to the last question uh, in terms of like, was that list an advantage to them? Yeah. So I'll say, I'll say, and I think these are really important. So the list was an advantage, or sorry, having the event company was an advantage mm. in that it created cash flow that mm. allowed the email business to get going, right? And I think this is one thing that a lot of creators overlook. Mm -hmm. um, we talk about this on my podcast all the time, where there's sort of like, there's there's a there, there are three steps to making the business work as a creator. First, you need cash flow. That's absolutely number one. So we always tell people, we're like, don't quit your job. If you want to go and start building a media company, uh, do it on the side at first, or you have to find some way to keep the cash coming because it takes time to build the trust that like an audience needs yep. to really monetize it well. Uh, after you have some kind of cash flow, whether that's through a job or a service company that you run or something that's you know easy to cash flow, uh, then you start building your audience, and then eventually it's products on the back side of that 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 you monetize. So for the hustle, having that event company early on definitely offered cash flow, which 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 uh, was definitely an advantage when it comes yeah. to building a media company. Um, but it's not necessarily the only way to start. I mean, Morning Brew uh, raised money from investors, you know, when mm -hmm. they when they decided to kind of make a full time go of it. So there's other ways to get that early cash flow. The other thing that I think uh, was an advantage to them, too, and I, I alluded to this and then I halfway forgot it while we were talking <laughs> is uh, they picked like a topic and voice that wasn't really well represented in the market. So if you look at what the hustle does, Today, it's kind of common to see, um, you know, business newsletters that are sort of like, you know, they use memes and, and yep. GIFs and they're kind of like your best friend. That was very rare back then. Back then, it was like Forbes, Business Insider, you know, like yeah. all these kind of stodgy magazines. And so uh, Sam started out early on. He said, you know, we are going to be like your best friend that just texts you what the news is. <laughs> and I think people who are looking to get into this 
uh, one of the most important things you can do early on is take a look at whatever your area of expertise is or your sphere of influence and just ask yourself, like, what do I wish was here? What's missing? Yeah. Because if you, you're not going to out morning brew, morning brew, you're not going to out milk road, milk road. Yep. So crypto news, business news, finance news, there's still plenty of opportunity there, but you can't beat these uh, mega players at their own game. You got to bring a different game to the table. Yeah. And yeah. so we can get into that as well. But you asked a more specific question, which is about how do you actually monetize early on? And and this is actually the right question to start with, because a lot of people will ask about not just the hustle, but like all kinds of newsletters. They'll say something like, well, how big does your audience have to be? Or um, like, what kind of technology do I need? How fast? How can I grow faster? Those kinds of questions. Um, here's what I have found in two years of talking to players at some of the most successful media companies in the world. The size of your audience matters less than knowing how to monetize these businesses. If you mm. know how to monetize these businesses, you know how the business model works, you can make uh, lots of money on a small audience. Like, And I know you guys talked about this last week, but I know somebody who does six figures on a newsletter with a thousand subscribers. Wow. I know somebody who does $5 million or uh, $2 million on a newsletter with 5,000 subscribers. I know people who do 10 to $20 million and uh, like a team of three people run that newsletter yeah. and it's in a niche you'd probably never think of, which is farming. Like they write about soybean futures and what? Corn. yeah, That's it's awesome. nuts. So there's, so the, the topic doesn't matter as much. The size of your audience doesn't matter as much as knowing how to monetize those Absolutely. things still matter, but, yeah. but really knowing the business model is the most important part. Yeah. So, um, to answer your question about how they monetize, well, let me go a little bit more broad. The, the hustle specifically sold ads early on, right? And that was yeah. easy for them to do because they had grown a pretty large audience. And mm -hmm. we can get into the specifics of how they did that in a second. But um, at the high level, there's basically three ways to monetize a newsletter company. You have free products, which are monetized via ads or affiliate deals. You have low price subscriptions and you have high price subscriptions. And the low price subscriptions are typically called front end products mm -hmm. and the high price subscriptions are called back end products. Mm -hmm. And so the way these businesses really work when you break them down is you have your free audience, which is always going to be your biggest audience, lowest barrier to entry, free audience. You can monetize that on ads and affiliate deals, and then you use it to sell memberships to your front end products. And then your front end sells memberships to your back end products. And the reality is you can you can mix and match those a lot. So some companies only have one, some have all three. But when you know how that business model works, it takes a lot of the mystery out of it. And you have like a much better chance of being successful at this. Yeah, absolutely. Ethan, I just want to backtrack here a little bit. I think you just share about what would be the perfect ad for your newsletter guide. You got to put a print in there that just says, Size doesn't matter. <laughs> and, then, and then very small at the bottom, you know, when building your newsletter, you know, whatever, you know, just, just, just something like that. I think it would call people's attention. Just random thought, you know. <laughs> that's yeah. perfect. Yeah. yeah. It's all about how you use it. There, there we there go. go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the voice. That's the voice of Contents Profit yeah. Newsletter, Francie. Come on. I know. Uh, <laughs> and, sorry, sorry. Just on, the, on that backtrack, I do want to just remind me. You mentioned something that I consider what what we call here a golden boulder. A lot of people talk about, you know, the topics, niching down, all these things, but you mentioned the voice, and that is so key. I think people don't really understand how valuable it is to have a voice that relates to other people. And we talk about the three pieces of differentiation in here. We've mentioned a few times, you know, uh, product processes and personality. And personality it is that voice that you're talking about, right? Infusing a personality into a newsletter that makes it exciting to read. I get drawn personally to the hustle type of newsletters, uh, newsletters that are not very formal, if you want to put it that way, right? I mean, I have the milk road yeah. too. It's all it's like 90% jokes, but you're still learning, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, and it's absolutely amazing. I, I love the stuff. So I wanted, I just wanted to bring this to people's attention so they're thinking, okay, well, am I infusing my personality to whether that is your newsletter or whatever type of content that you're making? Because I think that is actually something that is going to give you an edge. And it has actually some, been something that gave us an advantage when it's come to content is profit. Because people are like, 
man, you guys are so high, high energy, right? This is not what I was expecting from a podcast. And we're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. we love our, <laughs> we love a Red Bull, you know? Um, but yeah, I think it's $5 definitely sushi sprints. And yeah. $5 sushi sprints. Right. Uh, but it definitely it's an underlooked, I don't know, an underlooked asset maybe that people don't really take into consideration that much. Yeah, definitely. It's one of the most important things. So when we, um, broke, the business down, we kind of broke it down into this model that we call like the newsletter engine. And it, it sort of operates like a real engine. And it basically turns um, attention into money, mm. you know, and, uh, and the idea is basically you have <clears throat> like these growth funnels that filter attention down into your monetization strategies. But underneath all of that is what we call the product level. And the reason it's at the very bottom is because it is the foundation of everything. And when you're talking about product, you're talking about a few things. Yeah, you're talking about growth or sorry, uh, technology. But really what makes up the product is like the things that make the experience of your newsletter or whatever media company you're building uh, unique. So that's your voice, your editorial strategy, the way you build community inside mm. of your company. And by the way, one other thing I'll say just related to this concept of the business uh, model mattering more than the topic or the size of the audience, the, the model is universal. So we're talking about newsletters here, but once you know how this works, you'll actually see it being played out in multiple places. So yeah. like TikTok creators, <laughs> Instagram creators, basically anybody who is turning attention into money is going to be doing it through through this machine. And if they're using this model, they're going to be maximizing their uh, like their profits and their revenue. But a lot of people are just kind of like groping around in the dark trying to figure out how this works. And so hopefully what we can do here is just break it down, and make it a little bit more approachable for people. Yeah, I love it. I would love to to dive into that. The Before we do that, I want to mention, right, like we through our journey publishing, that has been one of the bigger discoveries, right? Like there's always that shiny object syndrome of like this method, this tactic, this thing, right? And at the end of the day, at the bottom of it of, of it all, those are just different names for the same thing. Because uh, as we started executing, for example, and, and for us, our framework is a publishing pyramid. We have a few ones like the minimum viable content, how we started. But at the end of the day, it's, it's very similar to whatever platforms that you're using. And I love the fact that we're breaking down the newsletters because I see the similarities. Like I, I'm going through that model in my head with a podcast and it's that thing, right? So on our side, right, you mentioned initially cash flow. Well, for us, it's a service, right? So yeah. like, just like the host was a, the events industry for us, it was a service that we needed the cash because we have no investors, right? And we needed to eat initially. Mm -hmm. So we're like, how do we do this? Well, we need cash in the bank now. Okay, let's set a service. And that's how it really everything started a few years back. Um, now that we're in the face of building that audience, being part of the Hotspot Podcast Network and the support and the years of experience, now we're starting to experiment on the product side of things, right? So there is a backside, right? And now that's the new phase uh, that, that we've been experiencing over the last like three to four months is that product phase where you're like listening to the audience, listening to what they, what they need. We took on new projects to see like what the feedback is on new things right on these new calls to develop those products so i see it very clearly and i love it because same thing you see it you you're like you turn this lens that you put it in your in your in your like next to your eye right and you look at these individual creators and you look at this like for example calling on samir for the published press right they have an amazing business model and they have a, an awesome episode the other day where they broke down kind of like their revenue and a lot they're known for a lot of youtube and they're like, the YouTube ad revenue is just about 10% of like the total thing that they do with their mm -hmm. platforms, with their newsletter, with the things, right? But at the end of the day, it's the same framework. So I, I, I say this because there's a lot of people that might be listening today or watching that might be like, oh, that's cool, but let me keep looking. No, don't keep looping. Just keep listening to this episode because it's all the same, right? And we're going to continue to give all the all the steps to to this. Um, yeah. No, that's a great way of, of, of putting it too. And um you're absolutely right. I mean, all the, basically all of these creator focused media, really what I talk about is like media brands, mm -hmm. right? Are you building a media brand? And increasingly the answer for that is going to be yes, because even if you have say software as a service, right? More and more of these software companies are building media departments related to them because it's, it's, it's actually less expensive to hire writers who, or, or YouTubers or people who create great content than it is to just keep putting ads out because that content performs over the long term, But you got to know how the media business works. So that's what we're going to get into here. Ooh. All right, let's dive in. <laughs> Fuss yeah. is like, tell me everything. Yeah, tell me everything. Okay. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed today's episode. 
part two of the newsletter series with Ethan Brooks. How epic was he? Ah, so good. So epic. Yeah, it was Big absolutely amazing. He dropped a lot of golden boulders, and this conversation was so long and so juicy <laughs> that we had to cut it into multiple parts. So make sure you stay tuned for part three of the newsletter series. That's right. We got to come back. There's so much more. All right. On the next one, we're going to cover a little bit more of the growth strategies that he has researched on how these big newsletters can make it to seven or even eight figures. All right. See you there. Bye. Thank you so much for tuning into the Contents Profit Podcast. Go ahead and follow the show in your favorite platforms and on social media at this bros Co. That is right. And if Ethan here, help you move one step closer towards your goal and building an awesome newsletter, please don't forget to share this episode and, and leave a five-star review. See ya. Bye, guys.